This is King World News. I'm Eric King, and you're about to hear our exclusive weekly gold brief with GATA, this time with Chairman Bill Murphy. Remember to go to our homepage at www.kingworldnews.com for more interviews, where this week we also have Bob Prechter from Elliott Wave International, Jeff Burns, CEO of Pan American Silver, as well as Peter Schiff of Euro Pacific Capital. Joining us now is Bill Murphy, chairman of GATA and founder of La Metropole Cafe. Bill, yesterday you wrote the gold fundamentals and technicals were very bullish. Why? Well, Eric, I think what we have here is a tipping point. When years ago, uh, Frank Veneroso, a good friend of mine and a speaker at our GATA summit in, in South Africa, on May 10, 2001, said in seven to ten years the central banks would hit the wall in which they would run out of available central bank gold to suppress the price. Well, we are right in seven to ten years. We're right in the middle of that zone right now. And recently, uh, we've heard, we know that the European central banks are withdrawing from selling in the market. I know the Chinese are, are, are buyers. They're going to be buying uh, hundreds of tons in the years to come, according to my sources. The Russians announced they were buyers. So you, at a time when demand picking up, and especially a seasonal demand this time of year, and the other, other central banks are withdrawing with the others buying, it's, it's going to make the ability of the gold cartel to suppress the price uh, just, very, very difficult. We knew we would get to this point one of these days, and I think uh, we are right here. And again, just technically, the gold cartel has been raiding the market the past month, and every time gold gets to 960, they take it down, and, and they just aren't able to keep it down very long. You know, we challenged 960 again today. So I think we're getting to the point uh, when gold and silver are, are finally going to do what we've been looking for for some time, and that's explode. You mentioned the Chinese are buyers, the Russians are buyers, and also last week we covered this to some degree, but the Chinese are now encouraging their citizens to buy silver, and I covered that with both Ted and, and also in the GATA portion last week. What did you make of that? Because the reason I bring that up, Bill, is you were writing about silver when everybody was making fun of it. I mean, back when it was in the fours and it was never going to go anywhere, you were a believer and you used to tell people, no, no, this is the time to buy this. Well, yeah, it's starting to play out. Even now, it's right below 15 bucks. It's awfully cheap. But again, I think I, I think there's a real shot that the shorts are are going to run into a situation in which you're going to get some kind of panic buying. There's a, a very interesting thing that happened today that I've used in my commentary as probably a lead, and that is about Ron Paul's bill to audit the Fed, which Barney Frank, who's the head, letting it, is head of the committee, has been letting it sit on the desk, even though there's more than 280 co-sponsors of the bill, and this should go through it. Barney Frank could block it. And it came out at 8.15 this morning, I guess the last night meeting, but it came out publicly this before gold and silver really popped today, that he said, yes, he expected this bill to pass, and he, he is going to, to further it. Uh, this is just huge news and uh, very, very exciting stuff. And I, one of the reasons I'm bringing it up again is because of the concentration of the shorts in silver and in gold and so on, but especially silver. These guys, if the Fed gets audited, it's going to show activity in the gold markets and probably silver that they don't want out. It means they will have been lying. They will have been caught. They didn't expect this to happen. And it's liable to send gold and silver to the stratosphere, and particularly silver because it's a very small market with only a couple of major shorts. And if they try to cover because they feel they have to get out, if they buy, who's going to sell it? Well, that's a good question, and I covered that earlier this year with John Hathaway, and I can pose this to you, Bill, but basically what John's premise was was if you just have some of these pension funds or China you know, begin to move into this market in very small percentage increments and begin to change their allocations, that the gold really doesn't exist, that a small increase, for instance, in the pensions funds, a very nominal increase, would take 27% of all the gold ever mined in history. And so I asked him where the gold would come from, and he said, well, it just won't. It doesn't exist. And so you'll basically have to have a combination of people acquiring some gold, but a dramatically higher repricing on the gold price. Is that absolutely on the money? Oh, yeah. The only place once the central bank gold is used up, it can come from is higher prices getting scrap into the refineries, which we had a fair amount of that at the beginning of the year. So that's where some, but again, even if the demand's high enough, the refineries can only go all out so much. They can only process so much gold. So you're, you know, that's what I was talking about earlier about the tipping point. I mean, you're getting to the point where central make uh, gold is drying up except for what we call this gold cartel. And they've got to start to be looking at each other about how they're going to handle this demand this fall. We're just going into the seasonal period. We know a lot of us have been looking for an explosion for some time, and one day it will just happen. Although they're still there. I mean, the 2% rule, gold's not allowed to go up more than 2%. 9.60, they stop at cold. They never allow after an early surge for gold to go higher. It's the most obvious thing. 
in, a, in American market history for anybody who can just knows anything about the market. What characteristics of the gold market make its price management so obvious, Bill? Because as an example, right now, you and I both know the commercials are long the dollar, and you have the small specs and the large specs short the dollar. And then on the other side of the coin, you've got the small specs and large specs heavily long gold, and the commercials very short on gold. So, you know, as you and I have talked about over time, I guess what I'm saying is before things take off, there could be a smash, but not for a fundamental reason. How can this not be obvious to people? I don't know. But again, the good news for our camp, as Mendeley Silver acted today, which is quite unusual for a number of reasons, but when they've attacked gold and silver the past number of months, gold has come right back again, and silver has come right back now. So they keep knocking it down, coming back. It seems like a, a, a rubber ball in water. They keep trying to push it below the water. It won't stay down. And we're getting very close to the point where it just explodes. And we're getting into the fall season, you know, September and October, when the financial markets get turbulent. I know myself, I'm looking for another crisis bid to come back into gold, which we haven't had since the market, you know, the Dow goes up every single day and the markets have come back. So that has gone away and the public still doesn't even practically know how to spell gold yet. I mean, I know this for a fact. So here we are at this potential tipping point, which could be explosive and very few are paying attention. What about U.S. Treasury auctions? What do you see in relationship to the price of gold? Oh, we, you know, our camp, it's not really laughing, man. We, we laugh privately, like, how again, how obvious this is. At the beginning of the week and late last week, we said gold would do nothing while the U.S. was doing its critical uh, uh, major treasury auction this week. Gold traded exactly the same way for four days in a row, the day before the auction and the three days of the auction. Exactly, if you put a, a chart pattern, one after the other. Yesterday afternoon, and, or soon after the auction was over, the dollar all of a sudden tanked. Gold rallied five dollars in the access market, which it rarely does, and then it exploded this morning up to nine sixty before they knocked it back down again. And the reason they do that is because they want to let people know that these that U.S. Treasuries are let them believe that there are really good buys here, that inflation is a problem, and they can't have gold soaring on a day when they have these auctions, so they control the price. With regards to all of this, because you've really chronicled this, right? GATA has, all of you have over at GATA, but you've promised and you've talked for some time about these central bank sales running out and drying up. Now that we're here and now that this is becoming more public, Bill, and of course, I don't want to say the crooks, but we may get a smash. You and I both know that, so we, we hope not, but that can happen. We're really getting to the end game on gold, as I think the point GATA has been trying to stress lately, correct? Yeah, I can I speak for myself here, but I think, you know, Chris Powell would say the same thing. We both believe we're getting close to the end game. And if this, again, I want to stress this, this potential audit situation, if that ever, uh, once Barney Frank gives the okay, if that's true, and he said it looks like in October that would be the case, it's going to have rumblies in the gold and silver market like you've never seen. And, and if that happens, you're like one day all of a sudden going to have, we're going to have to get out. And, and, and that could spark a move up that few people could even comprehend. And that's the advantage that the Ghana folks have, and people like yourself to understand what's happened and how they've gone through all this central bank gold and how it's been artificially suppressed. Gold can rally hundreds of dollars, and it's, it's still going to be way undervalued. And yet most people in the decimal say, oh, $1,000 gold is so expensive. It's not. It's not expensive. And and we know that for the, about the cost of production, we, as we talked about last time. So... It's going to probably happen out of nowhere, and it may be, again, something like this uh, Ron Paul's audit to Fed bill it, or something like that. It'll just, just go boom. So you're expecting an explosion, it sounds like, very suddenly. I would say sometime in September, yeah. I mean, especially if this was this was a surprise this morning uh, in the sense of what Barney Frank said, that, that you know, his quote is, yes, we will pass Ron Paul's audit to Fed bill. I mean, in this gold and silver thing, it's mind-boggling. We just figure, you know, nothing ever really gets done in Congress that's really important <laughs> from our world. I mean, nothing, ever. So, but if this happens, I can't see how a real audit of the Fed won't reveal what God has been uh, alleging uh, in the gold market for some time. Well, thank you so much, Bill, for joining us. If people want to go, obviously they can go to GATA at GATA.org, but if they want to go to your site, you have a two-week uh, free trial there. I think we have a link next to your interview page right there. You can click on either the, the master picture that GATA has, and that takes you to GATA, and then to the right of that we have La Metropole Cafe, and there's, what, a two-week trial subscription? Yeah, two-week free trial, and then it's 199 bucks if people think it's a value to them. And uh, I think it's more than any other time I can think of to know what's going on and why the next two months is going to make people a lot of money. 
And also just to point out once again, Eric Sprott has become so legendary because he made phenomenal calls for the last decade, but he's a reader of your site every day. Yeah, Eric's been a good friend and a great supporter for a long time now, and uh, we're, we're proud to have him there. All right, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Eric. Thank you for joining us at kingworldnews.com. Remember to tune in next week for another great show where we will have Rob Arnott, who manages $30 billion over at Research Affiliates. Also remember to go to our Gold Plus page for exclusive weekly interviews with Ted Butler and Gata and the business page for Barry Ritholtz, author of Bailout Nation.